we're going back in time. And one of our favorite exercises throughout the rest of December and possibly January is going to be revisiting your bold predictions. We chummed the water and we cast the net far and wide over the summer and you were happy to oblige and we thank you and you gave us your boldest predictions. I only had one rule. Any prediction you give me, you have to be willing to bet your money on. And uh, Colin and Jesse, I think we did like 31 segments of bold predictions. We did five per segment. You got that calculator out still? Do the math on that. We got a long way to go here. I'm going to do five of them tonight. First up, bold prediction from August. And we're going all the way to the Pac-12. Ian said a Pac-12 team is going to make the college football playoff, and it's not Utah. <coughs> nope, I put a nine on that. And I was right, and you were wrong. I'm not going to do it like that. But this only should have been a seven and a half because as it turns out, USC got shockingly close. In fact, you could argue that USC is one Caleb Williams Hanny injury away from actually making the college football playoff, in which case this would have been right. There are going to be a lot, of, a lot of close but no cigars in this game. It is college football after all. USC was good. Oregon was good. Now, they didn't make the playoff. I'm just saying there were some more teams out there that became a much bigger threat than any of us probably thought they would. USC, certainly. I mean, that, that's chief among them. But Oregon, UCLA hung around for a little while. Washington hung around for a little while. Who could have known Oregon State was going to be? Actually, we called them the biggest sleeper in the country. So we could have known that Oregon State was going to be a little bit better than America indicated they could be. A Pac-12 team not named Utah makes the playoff. And as it turns out, no Pac-12 team made the playoff, period. That extends a run that goes all the way back to when Washington made it. So it's been a little while, but I really, I'm going to stand by this. I think the Pac-12 was a good conference this year. I'm just going to stand by that. Pac-12 Pate has to say something along those lines. Next up, Jack, our buddy Jack said, Tennessee will win the SEC East. <coughs> nope. I put an eight and a half on this for boldness, and it checks out. But... But I am willing to cede that I probably had a little bit too high a boldness rating on this. Probably should have been an eight, maybe a seven and a half, seven and three quarters if we really want to get specific. I gave reasons, though. And I said, I think there'll be an offensive juggernaut. I don't think they'll be consistent enough defensively. Now, as it turns out, they weren't going to get through Georgia. Ironically, they beat Alabama. You know, I, I thought that Alabama being on the schedule, whereas Bama didn't play Georgia. I thought that was going to be the decider, but really the Georgia game was the decider. And when you watched it unfold, they weren't going to beat Georgia. And if they played again, I don't think they'd beat them either. But here was the other part. They could have made the playoff and not won the SEC East. It's that blemish down there at the bottom at South Carolina, having the Gamecocks casually hang a 63 burger on you. That is the inadequacy defensively that made me put an eight and a half on this rating. Colin, you know what? I don't think I like this here piece. I've decided. I, I don't, you know, I'm going to make the unprecedented move. Excuse me for a second. I'm just going to take it off. All right. Now it's just me and you. I can't hear the control room. If my life depends on it, I will, well, I'll just cease to exist out here. So I put this at an eight and a half and it pans out, but I am willing to, I'm, I'm willing to admit Tennessee in the top 10 all year, probably not something that we saw coming, although the model did. So I guess I should give, you know, me and the model have been on bad terms lately. I guess I should give you a little credit because you did have Tennessee power rated eight preseason. And I knocked you for that. And for that, I apologize. And that's as good as I can do with the model right now because it still loves Texas. The model would probably put Texas in the playoff right now if you gave it an opportunity. So, so the model... Keep it at arm's distance is what I would suggest you do with the model. Let's go to the Big 12. Oh, speaking of the horns, Vengeance hit us up. His bold prediction was that West Virginia makes it to the Big 12 championship game against Texas. <coughs> nope, 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 nope. This one's gross. This one is like throw up all over your keyboard gross. I put a nine and a half on this, and I probably didn't go high enough. West Virginia was horrific. They finished ninth in the Big 12. Don't let the name of the conference fool you. They only got 10 teams out there, and West Virginia was worse than nine of them. I don't want to tell you who finished 10th. It will only hurt my feelings. Now, Texas did end up third, 
So credit the Longhorns. They had an improved season. They finished 8-4. and four. That's better than 5-7, and seven, which they were last year. But um, Kansas finished higher than West Virginia, uh, and Kansas was 6-6. Six and six. So, yeah, this one was not close. This one, this one, and I think most of us sniffed this one out. It's not like I was sleuthing. It's not like I was out sleuthing you guys on that one. Next up, this one, this one is, holds a special place in my heart for all the wrong reasons. Kelly Ford said that Late Kick will pull off a doubleheader and attend two games on a single day. I'm not going to make the mistake of compounding it and trying to guess which date, but it's going to happen on a given Saturday. And I called this a nine. I put a nine on the boldness scale. And it turned out we almost pulled it off. In fact, I woke up the morning of week six, fully expecting to attend two games that day. Remember, and you know how rarely I use this sentence, we had private plane issues that day. Yes, that's how we roll. Or, or don't. So we were going to go Tennessee LSU that morning. And then we were going to go A&M Alabama that evening. But then we kind of got stuck in Tuscaloosa. As it turns out, we caught the better game of the day because Tennessee just drug LSU for four quarters, whereas Alabama A&M came down to the last play. But this, this should have been lower. You know, we were so close. It, it was just that small issue of not being able to get a plane off the ground. That's how close we were to being able to go to two games in one day. So I called that a nine on the boldness scale. I think it should have been a five. I did not have access to the information I shortly thereafter had access to. Next up, I guess we're going back to the Big 12 here. Jackson said Blake Shapin takes Baylor back to the Big 12 title game and the Bears win it. <whistles> nope. I put a six on that. I think it's because I agreed with him at the time. Uh, but it's, it's his prediction, not mine. So he's wrong, not me. That was a six. It should have been a seven and a half because Baylor ended up six and six. They ended up six. Ugh, a lot of sixes here. They ended up sixth in the Big 12 out of 10 teams. And um, here's the other downside. It's not like they lost a whole bunch of close games. It's not like they lost six games by a combined 20 points. They lost to Texas by double digits. They lost to Oklahoma State by double digits. They lost to Kansas State by four touchdowns. They did lose close to West Virginia. Yeah, point being they lost to West Virginia, and they lost to TCU by one. Baylor uh, ended up not really being that close this year, so I guess I should have put about a seven and a half on that one out of six. Uh, you notice a theme that has emerged so far. Everyone wants to hate on me for my predictions. Well, so far, you guys went 0 for 5 there. Now, I am told that down the road, not too far from now, we're going to have some segments where some of you hit out of left field on some bold predictions. In fact, some predictions I put a 9 or above on, you hit. So I'm enjoying it right now because I, I think the mood is going to change very, very shortly. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.